Hi, welcome to this lecture. Um, okay, uh, previous video I was talking about the common language infrastructure and virtual machines. Uh, and I told you I would show you a feature of the language um, uh, that ties all these different, you know, common languages together. And that is the common type system, which is, uh, let me get that right there which is uh, this piece right here, right? The common type system. Okay, so the common type system, uh, when you're programming in um, C Sharp, you'll have types that are part of the language. In other words, uh, like for example, let me pull up um, a program here. Okay, so this is the program that we worked on in the previous example. It was just simple hello world. But if I go down here in the main method and I, you know, add an integer, okay, I add an int, a local variable, int i, I'm sorry, int i equals zero. Okay, this lowercase int uh, is an alias. It's an alias for a type. Okay, let's return to the book. And uh, by the way, let me do the shameless plug. The material for this comes from two chapters uh, in my uh, latest book, C Sharp for Artists, uh, second edition. Uh, chapter six, well, uh, language fundamentals. Okay. Simple C Sharp programs, chapter six. Uh, and chapter four, okay, which we were just in. in the section, the common language infrastructure, okay? And then I went down to uh, diagram or figure 4-16, the common language uh, infrastructure diagram. Okay, so talking about the common type system, uh, if we go back to chapter six, excuse me, let's go find chapter six, simple programs. And I need to kind of scroll down here Okay, until I get to uh, this table. I, well, identifiers and keywords, that's one. Um, keep it on going. Okay, here we go. Um, in the section on types, or in the, yeah, the section on types, figure uh, 6 4, all right, figure 6 4, we see that we've got two primary categories of types. We've got value types and reference types. The simple types, all these types that are shown here in this diagram, they begin with lowercase letters and over here, okay, the class types object and string, okay, anything that's a, uh, a simple type I'm calling, um, it begins with a lowercase letter, okay, now these are the ones that you see in C Sharp when you're programming, okay, if you have syntax highlighting uh, in Notepad++ they show up in uh, what color is that? Hang on one second. Okay, they show up in like a purple, right? I guess is what I'm seeing. All right, so this this int right here, that is an alias to a to a value type defined in the system namespace. Okay, and it's uh, the same if you put int as if you put int 32. Okay, that's equivalent. Okay, the difference is int is an alias to int32, and int32 is a value type found in the, is a structure, I should say, is a structure found in the system namespace. So system.int32 represents an int, system.int64. So let's go back here uh, to the book on in chapter 6, okay, and... Um, we go down to the next table, I believe. Hang on down here. Okay. The table is 6-2. And so if you have lowercase object in your code, right, it refers to the object class in the system namespace. Okay. If you have a lowercase string, it refers to the string class in the system namespace. And in this table in Chapter 6, uh, gives all the different object or the different simple types, right, and the class types 
um, that are lowercase are built into, I should say, the type aliases, right, in C Sharp, along with uh, a brief description and their corresponding system namespace structure or class and the default values and the value range. Okay, so this is a handy table uh, in Chapter 6 of, of uh, C Sharp for Artists. Let's return to the code here. And so, so you're saying, well, hey, great. What does that give me, right? Okay, so uh, what, what we do is we, I'm sorry, I have to go back to the book now. Go back to chapter four, okay. Okay, we go back to uh, this diagram here, common language infrastructure, because C Sharp's built-in types are aliases to types in the system namespace, it's that .NET framework that unifies all these different languages, right? This common language specification. And the common language specification will allow you to write a program, let's say, in Visual Basic or Visual C Sharp .NET, right? And, you know, and C Sharp and take those modules that are generated by the respective compilers and combine them uh, into a managed assembly. So in other words, you know, I can write a program in Visual Basic uh, or a module. I can then link that module or combine that module and compile it with a C Sharp code to create a working program, right? Because they share the same common type system. And uh, an alias in Visual Basic .NET points to a structure in the system namespace the same structure right so so that's a real nice feature now to get more information on the individual types and uh, classes and structures that represent these types you pull up a browser okay and uh, and you just type in well I, I like to go to Google quite honestly All right just that's my natural inclination I guess I'm old school and then type uh, system namespace okay so and it's generally it's always it's the first one that comes up right if you're if you're looking for any type of information on um, MSDN that's the best way to segue into it um, and then just make sure that you're in the right framework for it usually it's the current version that comes up right as the new versions come out Microsoft makes that real nice okay <clears throat> so Looking for, right, we're looking for system, well, int32. So these are classes, right? We got to scroll down. Well, we can find object. L, M, let's say, I, O, L, M, N. Okay, got to keep on coming to object. So there's the object. So it's system dot uppercase O for object, right? Uppercase object is, is the class that is, you know, points to by the alias lowercase object in your code, right? So uh, just to make that point home, if I type, if I go back to my code and I typed in object, right? Okay, so that object is a reference to the, it's the same thing as object, capital O-B, except I, you know, I'm, I'm using system, right? So up here I say using system. If, if I didn't have this using up here, right? I would have to say system.object. There we go. Now I have to use a fully qualified namespace in order to you know, access this. But that's the same thing, right? I say object um, 01 equals new object. Okay, because I have to initialize them as their local variables. Object 0, um, zero um, I should say O, object O, okay. 01, and then object. Um, o2 equals new object, like that, right? You know, object can be anything, right? I can say, uh, I could say object O equals a string, right, if I wanted to, equals string. Let's do this, like that. Now, the acid's in the I say the proof is in the pudding, right? Let's let's go ahead and compile this thing and see what we get. Uh, we'll get some. Uh, what we'll do is we'll get some warnings because we're not using all those. We've declared a bunch of different uh, 
um, you know, local variables, but we're not actually using them. I need to minimize this. Okay, and I need to do CD. Nothing like programming on the fly without rehearsing. So disassembling code, I want to just change to this directory. This is the easiest way, since I don't want to type all that stuff in. Okay, DIR, so then CSC star dot CS. All right. Uh, okay, uh, okay, so N32, right now it's giving me an error, right, because I'm not referencing it. So I gotta go back up here, hang on one second. Go back to the code. Uh, system dot uh, n32 system dot n32 all right and then I got system dot object and then I have to say system dot console right since I took out that using system control save and then let's see what else I got here uh, public class public static void main system uh, and then I've got object is built in. That should be no problem there, right? System.object in32. Now let's compile it again. Uh, and it says the type or namespace system. Maybe I didn't spell system right. Yes, why is system dot? Oh, BJ object. Let's try that. Okay, I see what it's saying. All right, so I got to go up here and pull my head on my buddy in system. There we go. System dot object. Okay, there we go. All right, now, yeah, so anywhere you use object, right, if you don't have that using system, you have to fully qualify that namespace. So so this will compile now. So go ahead, and I'm going to clear the screen first. All right. Okay, and then we get a warning, and that's okay, right? I'm not using that, that variable, so, and that doesn't matter. But so system.int32 is the same as, you know, the int alias, right? Because the int alias, the lowercase int, points to system.int32. Lowercase object is the same thing, uh, is, is our alias for system.object, et cetera, et cetera. So if we return to uh, Microsoft Edge, all right, and we um, go back to the system namespace, Okay. I think it's working. It's thinking. Okay. And then we scroll down. All right. To the um, structures. Go down to structures. There we go. And then we'll start seeing boolean, right? So lowercase bool. And then byte, uh, char. These are the structures. So let's go to. So what can we learn by looking at the, you know, um, structure okay well the it's an object right so it has it actually has a lot of functionality each one of these things right things that you come in handy so in other words I can you know it's got the it's implemented the compare to method equals method get hash code gets type parse this is a static method right so let's say I wanted to convert a string into an object Right. Well, you go into into an in integer. So I wanted to read something from the console, a string value, and it's and I want to make sure it's an integer. Okay. Then I can use the try parse method or the parse. Here's the try parse. The try parse will attempt to parse it, right, and then convert it into a string if it's successful. And whereas the parse is, you really want to make sure that that is a valid string before you parse it. Or be prepared to handle the exception. Okay, but bottom line is, these class, these structures, right? In this case, I'm talking about the N32 structure has a lot of functionality, especially in the static methods. Right now, there's two fields for these for most of these, you know, in integral types: 
max value and min value. So this is a great place where if someone is inputting something from the user interface and, and you're going to stick that value or you want to convert that value to an int, right? You want to make sure that it falls within the max maximum value and the minimum value because if you don't and you try to create an int with a string that translates to a greater value than the type can hold, you'll get an exception. You know, and then if you force the conversion, you're going to lose, you're going to lose value, right? It's not going to be as as uh, what, you know what you think you're putting in that in that variable because you're trimming the the length of it. Okay, so uh, lots of good information, right, in the .NET documentation. So so that's an overview of the common type system, all right? These lowercase types are aliases for structures and classes in the system namespace. Once again, this material is discussed in excruciating detail in my book, C Sharp for Artists, second edition, uh, available at pulpfreepress.com. If you have questions or comments or special requests for videos on topics that are giving you the dickens, just send me an email, rick at pulpfreepress.com. Happy computing!